between my eyes Walked through the park, came out better on the other side See life's like a peach if you find the sand And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Einstein Bagels. Even you know, we have Einstein Bagels founder Noe talks about how several businesses he tried before Einstein Bagels did not work and the many stories. I've even had author of The Paleo Diet, Dr. Lauren Cordain, on to talk about The Paleo Diet and his decades of research, and you'll see how this relates to the guest today. Um, our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran, and it's application only. Today, I'm very excited. We have Megan Reamer. She's founder of the potato chip company, Jackson's Honest. They have beautiful labeling. I'm sure you've seen the chips on shelves in grocery stores. She sells them all over the U.S. in eight countries in places like Whole Foods, Bed Bath & Beyond, Woodman's, just to name a few. Early on, they were even selected by the Academy Awards to be an exclusive snack food for the green room, executive suites, and backstage Beyond that, what's more impressive is Megan is a mother of four, and the company was inspired by their son Jackson's illness. Megan, thanks for joining me. So, obviously, you go from making it until 2 a.m., um, you and your husband and, and a family, to hiring team members. Um, when do you hire, and, or who do you hire for your first um, staff? And then, cause, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so um, it actually came full circle because the first person that we hired was our old buyer for the Rocky Mountain region for Whole Foods, mm. um, and she was our director of sales, just period. She she was like the natural and organic director of sales, but she was um, for that channel, but she was handling all inbound um, inquiries for uh, the chips. And so she started in January of 2015. So she was working for Whole Foods at the time. She was working for Whole Foods at the time. Yes. We were um, stunned that she, that she wanted to leave that opportunity. Yeah. She had a great job there right. and um, come and work with us. What did she say? Why did she say she, she was ready to move over and just wanted to be with Jackson's Honest? She really liked uh, our brand. She really liked the quality of what we were producing and she really liked the story and she liked the mission behind it. And, um, uh-huh. and she had a great rapport with Scott and I from working closely together. Yeah. And so she was ready to be part of something from the ground up and start something. I mean, we, we like she created the process she wanted and everyone who's joined us um, has been able to yeah. craft their, their role the way they wanted it to be. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it's certainly a risk for someone to leave a, a position right. like that or any other, you know, sales position with a more established company. But um, they've had a lot of autonomy and they've had a lot of, you know, wide berth to um, to create their space the way they wanted to. And, and, and they're all excited about it. So she was the first one in January 2015. Um, the second person joined us. She's our like office manager, sort of, you know, logistics, internal logistics person, keeps everybody on the straight and narrow. Um, she was May of 2015. And then we hired another salesperson in September of 2015. And then we hired an operations person who was also an employee of Whole Foods. He was the the uh, the buyer that we hired. Jessica, her name is. He was her boss at Whole Foods. Um, he was the grocery mm. coordinator for the region, and he joined a year ago in December. And he's really just, um, you know, each person that's joined has been able to kind of institutionalize or create process and right. standards right. around the roles. And so, you know, we were still, I was still responding to uh, POs until probably earlier this year when he was able to take it over 100%. Um, But we were still using like Excel spreadsheets and stuff to do that, you know, Um, and kind of like running this parallel spreadsheet QuickBooks business. So um, 
it's just, you know, craft, like yeah. created a, a, a process yeah. around, you know, becoming a larger company yeah. and, and your mission and product has attracted rock stars. It seems <laughs> it's, that's exactly right. We've been really fortunate with the people who've joined us and, um, they do, they do, a an enormous amount of work. I mean, we have a pretty small team still, um, you know, certainly less than 10 people and, and it's, uh, Herculean is is what their their job is. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So are they local? Do they come into one office or are they all remote? How does it work? They come into one office. We have an office in Boulder now oh. and um, all but one uh, salesperson works there. Wow. So yeah. you mentioned Excel. So yeah. I want to hear about some. what is some of the software and things now that you use to, to run the company? I think... I saw um, the the site is on Shopify, but I think most people just buy it in the in the grocery stores and things like that. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Um, we do have still online orders that we take through Shopify. Um, we use QuickBooks right now. Um, we're transitioning to an enterprise software system in January that we're really excited about. Mm -hmm. um, we think it's just. It's 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 a little bit early to do it, but it's also this kind of I think it's this narrow window of getting locked into QuickBooks where you then can't transition to something like this enterprise system. So um, so we're excited to do that. We think it's going to be a pretty meaningful change to the way we operate our business and the mm -hmm. access that everyone can have to um, the state of the business at, at any point in time. Any other tools or softwares that you use on a daily basis that allow you to run your life or, or business that be important for everyone to know? <laughs> no, really no. not. <laughs> <laughs> Just my Google Calendar. <laughs> Google Calendar, exactly. Yes. Um, so flavors. Um, how do you decide when to release a new flavor? Because it's obviously a lot of time, energy, money, work. And you start with the sea salt, and then you went to the the uh, the sweet potato um, and the, or the vinegar. Um, yeah. So how do you decide what when to release uh, a new flavor? There's not really much science behind it. Yeah, um, that's okay. I'm curious really, your process. Yeah, it's like yeah, you could no, have eaten a donut one. Or you don't eat donuts, but if you did, it's like oh, I eat this maple <laughs> cinnamon donut. Like let's make a maple cinnamon chip. <laughs> yeah. yeah, kind of no. Yeah. Um, you know, we uh, we were fooling around with like maple cinnamon is a good example because we were talking about it a year ago um, and just wanting to do something with the sweet potato and do it in the fall when it's, you know, mm -hmm. this that seasonal time and Thanksgiving and um, and we just didn't have the it, we just couldn't line it up like we didn't know what kind of spice blend we wanted to use. We didn't want to do like a pumpkin spice thing, but um but we wanted it to be this fall flavor. And so, you know, I think it was, it's just a timing thing, like how far in advance we need to look at creating the new packaging and getting the spice blend created and then going through the iterations mm. of, you know, adding more cinnamon or, or nutmeg or whatever is in it. Right. And so, um, it's really just sort of what we have the bandwidth for, right. like, Right now we're gearing up because we have these tortilla chips. And so we've had three uh, flavors. We've had a blue corn, a yellow corn, and we've had this salsa fresca flavor. Yeah. So we're sort of relaunching this tortilla program in January. And we're going to do um, a restaurant style of blue corn, yellow corn, and a sprouted red tortilla, red mm. corn tortilla. And then we're also doing three smaller bags, like five ounce bags of flavored. So we're doing the salsa fresca in the smaller bag. Um, we're doing like a churro, kind of a maple um, cinnamon tortilla. Right. And um, we're doing a lime with sea salt. And so, you know, that's that's been a real focus for us where I don't like it's put any kind of potato chip flavor on hold because yeah. – we're um, we're really excited about the tortilla platform, and you know those are organic, non-GMO, obviously cooked in coconut oil. So, right. um, you know, it's really kind of just I think what um, what lines up when, and and you know yeah. possibly looking at doing something for the summer with potato chips next year. But you know, it's something we have to kind of start thinking about right now in order to get all the film that we need and the packaging done. So and is it like about a year in advance? For you yeah, to, yeah, of, yeah, yeah, 
for us, you know, we're a small company, and so it takes us that long to to make sure we have the cash flow we need to create packaging that we're not going to sell for a while, you know. And um, it's just right. small business stuff, right. and and the time frame. Well, that's what I'm curious about with the process because. Is it if you get a certain number of requests, is there anything with the customer feedback? Like uh, if someone are people emailing you or calling and saying, I'd love this. I would love if you had this flavor. What kind of customer feedback have you taken in that, uh, you know, has caused you to create a flavor or maybe not create a flavor? Yeah, we get a lot of customer feedback. Mm -hmm. Um and I think the largest uh, kind of initiative we've done for the customer, based on customer feedback, are the tortilla chips. Mm. Like as soon as the potato chips were on the shelf yeah. and people were getting those and getting access to those and saying, oh, I'm so happy you're doing this and I'm so excited about the coconut oil and finally someone's doing this. You know, really the same things that my husband and I were saying. Um, it was pretty quickly thereafter that we kept getting these inquiries around, you know, tortilla chips and right. no one's doing this in the tortilla space. And so... Launching those was, was you know, it was not 100% based on customer feedback, but it was pretty significant. Right. So you come out yeah. with the tortilla chip or whatever flavor. How do you then launch it to the public? Like, how do you decide, um, okay, I mean, do you go back into all these stores you're already in and you can release the bags there? Or what's the, the launch process? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really going back to the retailers that we've partnered with for a while. Um, Whole Foods has been a great partner in our in our one of our you know sort of longest um, uh, retailers that we've been working with, and and by longest you know that's like two years. And so, um, but uh, natural grocers as well, you know, we'll go to them for instance with the maple cinnamon and say, hey, do you guys what do you think of these and let us have some feedback and what do you think your customers would think? And, you know, it's part of that process and working with them that, um, you know, they'll say, Hey, we, we really like these. We want to put these on our shelf. And, you know, again, it doesn't need to be this big splash across the country of, of working with every retailer to take a new product and take right. a new flavor. It's doing it piecemeal right. and, and understanding what works and, You'll strategically look at who to, it makes sense for and then maybe approach them to release it to that specific, those yeah. specific grocery stores. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then it just seems to, to grow from there, right? It's just this sort of organic growth process where we then have data to show what the sales are for that particular flavor. And we have customer feedback and, you know, or they've had feedback from their customers asking for it, right? And so then you can kind of, um, it helps create the picture and create the story that you want to talk to the retailer about to bring it in. Yeah. I mean, it seems from early on, the bag just flew off the shelves. Right, so sales seems like that it's been amazing. Um, what other challenges, or I guess challenges in general, would you say there are with with a company like this? Well, I think I think that's one of them. Just the Is growth, it? right, and mm -hmm. the and the the speed of the growth has been hard to to catch up with and hard to stay um, keep pace with. You know, it's it's kind of like catching a tiger by the tail a little bit. Um, and, and, and that presents challenges, right? Like I kind of said, um, having the cash that you need to go on the shelves places, right? Cause you know, what we invoice our customers for isn't necessarily what we get back because, you know, you have to support going on the shelf, right? So some companies, some retailers have slotting fees where you pay to, to go on the shelf. Some, um, retailers, you know, um, uh, want to do certain types of promotions right out of the gate, right. and so it's you know, cutting it's really into just... it's cutting into the profit and everything else. It's a exactly. Lot. Yeah. Yeah, and and then still having the resources, the financial resources you need to to make product when you're not necessarily getting paid on it, right? And so, you know, those are just small business challenges. But but when you yeah. have a company that experiences pretty quick growth. Right. Sometimes that gets compressed and it gets more intense because um, you are trying to, you know, keep up with the retailers that want to put you on the shelf. Um, I think for us, it's been that's been one challenge. I think the, the the larger challenge has just been creating a good supply chain, right? So um, 
having potatoes available, which are a seasonal crop, yeah. having them available at the time of year that we need them in the quantities that we need them, and also sourcing the coconut oil um, mm. and doing that in a financially viable way where we're not, you know, caught because we need some. And, yeah. and we, you know, we've worked hard on that supply chain. And I think that's been the biggest challenge yeah. to get that in place, which, yeah. which we feel really comfortable with yeah. now. There's so many moving parts. I'm getting stressed out hearing about this, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of moving parts. That's a good good way to describe oh it. Oh, my gosh. Sometimes it feels like you're putting a fire out every day. I'm sure you are. Um, <laughs> so I always ask this, um, I guess this is Inspired Insider, um, two things. What's been the lowest business moment? Um, and then what's been the proudest business moment for you? Oh, wow. Um, and then with the know, lowest I, one, like how you push through it, you know, after obviously it occurred. I think the lowest would probably be, I don't know if I have one particular event. Yeah. I think it's like, I know, I know, I know something that was real, a real challenge was, um, we were in, when we were first going on the shelf, uh, at natural grocers, it was, we were getting, shipping the chips and getting them into the warehouses several weeks before they were going to put them on the shelf. So the timing of that was the week that we were in Washington DC at the National Institute of Health with my son. Mm, right. And so I'd set all everything up before I left. And, and it wasn't like I was taking a week vacation because it was just, you know, right. my husband this and I still fun. doing this. This is not a fun trip, right? Yeah. It wasn't a fun trip. No. It wasn't like I was out of pocket and I couldn't be reached. But I thought I had put everything in place that yeah. it was really kind of managing that. Yeah. But what happened was um, – UNFI never told me the very specific delivery instructions that they had for their warehouses. So they have very specific carriers that they like to deliver into their warehouse. And if you don't use one of their carriers, it's a completely different delivery process. Mm. We weren't using their carriers. And so, you know, I thought I'd set everything up and this stuff was just going to go into the warehouse. Um, I started to get calls early that week from the buyer at Natural Grocers asking where all the product was. And and then in researching, like with the trucking company that I had set it up with, they said, oh, we were turned away. Oh, we couldn't deliver. Oh, it's sitting at this terminal. And and then I had to, you know, kind of in the middle of this week with my son, had to figure out this logistics nightmare. Right. Um, that was that felt like a real challenge yeah. because it was really sort of this, right. you know, I had no other experience with right. um with with how much of a big deal this was to me it felt like a really big deal like we weren't going to get on the shelf if i couldn't get these sure. chips into yeah. the warehouse yeah. in in the right time frame um so i think that was a real learning process yeah. for for me and it's yeah. something that's stuck with me i yeah. mean you know we made it work and and we probably paid a ton more than we should have for it um but that that felt like a real challenge and a yeah. real sort of um not sense of defeat, but yeah. you know, it was sort of we are, we aren't even on the shelf yet. Like, let's get on the shelf and 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 get people trying these chips. Like, I don't want this to be sort of self defeating right. with right. with what we're trying to do right here. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think I've had some really interesting highlights with yeah. the chips. I mean, you know, one of them being hearing people ask for them and and being in the store and seeing them in somebody's grocery cart. I mean, that means a lot to me, and that. Right always I always want to tear up when I see that mm -hmm. um, because when we first started we weren't sure if our friends and family were just being nice to us and saying hey these chips taste really great you should sell them um, you know it was like this real leap of faith when we started offering them to strangers mm -hmm. who you know really don't care about your feelings and won't will will gladly tell you like right. these things taste bad or you know whatever <laughs> and so right. um, so getting that positive feedback uh, initially and then continuing to receive it uh, has been, you know, really overwhelming, quite honestly. And then there's like just certain points, I think, throughout this um, experience. I mean, I've had these unbelievable opportunities through the chips and meeting people that, you know, I would never have met in my life without um, having this company. And and you know one that sticks in my head is going to this conference about a year ago and there was a party at whole foods like at the headquarters 
and um, John Mackey was there and he was speaking and, and it was this beautiful, you know, October night in Austin with a local band playing and, and all these people there who are industry leaders. And, and I was there as part of, you know, this sort of innovative uh, company. Right. And it was this surreal moment for me, like, why I am standing on the rooftop deck at Whole Foods mm -hmm. headquarters Pretty in cool. Austin, like, I'm like a mom of four kids, like a stay-at-home mom forever. <laughs> what am I doing here? Um, yeah. You know, so it's kind of those, like, very yeah. sort of um, uh, episodic events that have happened. Uh, but just even going on the shelf at Whole Foods, like I said, or Natural Grocers or Wegmans, yeah. you know, and having people across the country say – Oh, I bought your chips. These are great. You know, that's meaningful. Yeah. Amazing. Megan, it is truly amazing. And, you know, how I would have wanted you to respond in that that challenging time is they're mapping my son's genome. Just figure it out. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like what is she talking about? Okay, we'll just not, yeah. we'll just figure it out. Amazing on both accounts. Um. You know, so where should we point people towards right now? I have one last question for you. Where should we point people towards online? Obviously, they could check out Jackson's Honest products at whatever local grocery, Whole Food, or wherever they find on the shelves. Um, what's the, the website or maybe social media channels that people should check out for you? Yeah, so the website is jacksonshonest.com. The um oh you're going to put me on the spot with the Twitter. I think it's oh, at Jackson's Twitter, yeah. Honest. I don't know if people tend to engage in certain mediums for Jackson's Honest more than others or or not. Um you know, I think Instagram's been a big um mm -hmm. a big push for us this year and we've seen a lot of good activation on Instagram. Yeah. We're we love to do giveaways with other brands. We've got a great one going on right now. Um and and you know, I think for I think what I would ask for kind of a takeaway yeah. is to just, you know, not necessarily buy our chips, but just check out the story and check out why. You know, just understand the difference between coconut oil or a healthy saturated fat yeah. and a polyunsaturated vegetable oil. That's it. Yeah. You know, just, you know, there's an educational process there and there's a yeah. reason um, why one is different than the other. And so, you know, incorporating, um, incorporating those fats into your lifestyle in whatever way, shape or form is possible, yeah. um, makes a difference. And yeah. it certainly makes a difference if you're struggling with anything that's autoimmune based from, from skin outbreaks like eczema and to, you know, a serious, um, you know, autoimmune disorder like my son or an MS or ALS, you know, that, that kind of pro-inflammatory versus anti-inflammatory foods, they matter, particularly when mm. you're, you know, you're facing a real medical challenge. Yeah. And I'll say it. I mean, they should check out the, ch uh, check out the story, but they should also buy the chips. They're, they're really good. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I would have them here to show up, but I, but I uh, ate them all. Um, last question, <laughs> Megan, is just from this journey, I mean, it's been crazy family journey, crazy, you know, business journey. Um, what's um, what should we leave people with? Whether it's a big takeaway or a big lesson so far. You know, I think it's really just keeping keeping it positive. Like for 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 me and the business, and you know, having the response that we've had, mm -hmm. in my personal life and my family. Um, you know, it felt for, for several years really bleak, um, mm. um, with my son and what he was facing and not having any answers. And yet, you know, we continue to move forward and try to keep searching and, and keep trying to understand how we could help him. And so, um, you know, we always tried to keep it in this, in this positive place, not knowing how long, you know, he would be with us and we'd have him in our life. And right. so, um, every day had to count because of that. And, and it still does. And so, you know, that's what I think is, is my priority and, and through the business as well as through, you know, my home life is, um, really taking something that seems negative, um, or, you know, sort of a lemon and turning it into lemonade and making it into something really positive. Yeah. Meg, I want to be the first one. Thank you so much. I really appreciate what you do. And, um, you know, thanks again. I appreciate it.
Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah. It's been great to speak with you. Yes. I've had a good time. You too. Thanks. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.